Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about an important topic in neurology which is known as anterior spinal artery syndrome. So, but before we dive into the topic actually, let us uh, look at the schematic drawing or schematic anatomy of the spinal uh, spinal cord circulation. So, as we have already know that we have anterior spinal artery and we have posterior spinal artery. So, concerning this presentation, we are going to only talk about the anterior spinal artery actually. So, now this is the aorta, this is the arc of the aorta. So, this is the vertebral artery. But, as I have already uh, said, this is a schematic diagram because the vertebral artery the, uh, branches out from the subclavian artery, not directly from the arch of the aorta. But, to uh, make the drawing very simple, I just uh, because the subclavian artery uh, emerges from the arch of the aorta, so that's why I just put it uh, in the aorta. So, this is the vertebral artery. So, the two vertebral arteries in this on the both side, this is for the left side, this is for the right side, this is another vertebral artery that emerges from the subclavian artery actually. So, they fuse to form a big artery which is called the basilar artery, right, which enters into the skull together with the spinal cord this red thing this red red dog, uh, red tall thing is the spinal spinal cord so this uh, spinal artery this black thing you are seeing is the anterior spinal artery and uh, this anterior spinal artery branches out from the vertebral arteries one branch from the right side of the vertebral artery uh, another branch from the left vertebral artery so they fuse to make a long uh, artery, which is called anterior spinal artery, that runs, that runs out all the way down to the spinal cord, actually. So that is it. So this is a schematic. This is a schematic diagram. It's not anatomically actually uh, uh, correct. So, but, but just for understanding purpose. So one thing to understand is that this anterior spinal artery syndrome result from maybe for example occlusion maybe insufficiency or whatsoever so by any reason or by any means if we have insufficiency of blood flow through the anterior spinal artery this for example the 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 symptoms will going to manifest below the, the level of the lesion at the level and then below the level of the lesion for example let's say we have uh occlusion here if we have occlusion here then definitely if blood is pumped out and then go into the vertebral artery and then runs down the area that are above this occlusion will going to be okay because they are going to be receiving their blood but since this is, this is uh, occluded then definitely the blood can no longer run down to the vertebra, to the spinal cord so that's why the symptoms of will only manifest below the lesion actually so because if we have obstruction here Blood, when blood is pumped, then definitely it will enter into, uh, into the vertebral arteries, that is the right side and the left side, and then it will run out downward. But we have occlusion here, so here will only will will will, 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 will it is an area that will show the symptoms of ischemia. That is at the level of the lesion and then below the lesion. All these are going to suffer from ischemia actually. So that is it. So this is the for the schematic diagram of. Uh, spinal cord uh, uh, circulation and one thing to also remember is that spinal artery anterior spinal artery uh, supply the anterior two set of the spinal cord while the posterior one set is supplied by the posterior uh, spinal artery so that is it so now let us see the uh, this is also schematic diagram of the uh, of the spinal cord this spinal cord levels like this so that is it <coughs> so the, when this spinal artery is occluded or there's insufficiency once two sat anterior two sat of the spinal cord is the zone that will get damaged all this area will get damaged anterior two sat because this anterior two sat is the one that is supplied by the anterior spinal artery so all this area will going to get damaged and the one thing to remember is that so let's see Let's say it's at the level of this. All this 
was going to be had to, had to have problem but anteriorly not posteriorly that's why i even show it here the posterior down from the, uh will going to only will going to be normal actually only the anterior anterior and then down anterior to side will going to show the problem so that is it so this is what the, the, let's say this area is normal so this is it so we have to also know that for example we have fibers that are carrying sensation fibers that are carrying pain and temperature and also fibers that are carrying the vibration since they are sensory innervation they have to pass through the dorsal horn that is the posterior horn right so if we take fibers that are carrying the vibration and proprioception and then uh, two point discrimination they are carried by dorsal column uh, medial laminiscal system right so the moment they enter into the posterior gray horn that's the dorsal gray horn then they pass through the uh, posterior funicular that is in this area right and also for the left side fibers that are carrying vibration and then proprioception they go through the posterior horn and then ascend upward so these fibers they cross at the level of medulla oblongata right they cross at the level of medulla oblongata contra to the contralateral side fibers that, that uh, from the left side carrying vibration they go and attach to the right hemisphere while fibers from the right side that are carrying vibration and then uh and the proper reception also goes to the left hemisphere that is at the the the, the cross to the contralateral side but at the level of medulla oblongata while fibers that are carrying pen temperature sensation this and then crude touch they also pass uh, or enter the spinal cord at the level of or enter the spinal cord through the uh, posterior horn but they cross right away the the point they enter into the spinal cord right away to the contralateral side at this side lateral funiculus not in the posterior but they cross to this right side and then ascend upward and then fibers also that are carrying pen and temperature and then crude touch also from the right side they enter through the posterior gray horn and then still cross right away the point they enter into the spinal cord and then ascend upward like this so that is it so this means if we have damage uh to this anterior two side this area will going to be preserved because only the anterior two side that is affected right but the fibers that are carrying temperature and then pen are going to have, have problem also and also we have to know that motor fibers we have motor fibers that that is corticospinal tract that are descending right that are descending downward so they also pass that they are descending and then they make a synapse they make a synapse actually at this side that's under at, at the anterior horn and then with the lower motor neuron then let the lower motor neuron pass out right so they too also they uh, actually uh, cross at the level of uh, medulla opening that, that is pyramidal decussation right so that is it also in the in the right side also they passes through this and then they make a synapse with the lower motor neuron and then the lower motor neuron pass out to go and innervate the skeletal muscle actually so this is the basic so we see that from this explanation if this is get get ischemia fibers that are carrying temperature and sensation from temperature sensation and then pain sensation and then motor nerves that are descending especially the lateral corticospinal tract and the anterior corticospinal tract will going to get damaged right and but all but fibers that are carrying vibration and proprioception are going to be preserved because this area is normal so that is it so now let let us dive into the topic so anterior spinal artery syndrome by definition this is a syndrome that is caused by ischemia syndrome caused by ischemia of of the anterior spinal artery or decreased blood flow through this through that artery 
so this may result or resulting in ischemia ischemia in anterior two sad anterior two sad of of the spinal cord but we have to know that we have there is intact there is intact there is intact uh uh posterior one side posterior one side of the spinal cord so that is it and we have already saw that in the last diagram that we have already seen the posterior one side it is the one that is consistent only the dorsal dorsal column medial laminal system so that is it then now let us see the the etiology what co really causes this insufficiency of blood flow through the uh, anterior spinal artery that is the etiology most common causes or most of the causes actually in most cases is due to insufficiency of, from the aorta that is within the aorta that's why i even make the diagram very easy to show the relationship with the aorta so in most cases most causes of this syndrome is due to is due to insufficiencies insufficiencies with insufficiencies within the aorta on the aorta for example in aortic dissection in aortic dissection so or maybe even trauma to the aorta for example penetrating trauma penetrating trauma to the aorta and etc and also neoplasia neoplasia can compress directly on the uh, anterior spinal artery right and then this is obvious then causes that occlusion and then that is neoplasia so even acute disc herniation can also compress against the uh, anterior spinal artery right so that is it even cervical spondylosis or whatsoever so these are the etiologies so now let us see the signs and symptoms signs and the symptoms signs and symptoms we're going to have a kind of complete motor paralysis below the level of the legion we have already seen the diagram right so complete motor paralysis motor paralysis below below and the, at the level below the level of the legion again there will going to be a kind of loss of pain and temperature sensation at the level and then below the level uh, of the legion due to interruption of the spinal thalamic uh, spinal thalamic tract right that's lateral and then anterior spinal thalamic tract so loss of loss of pain and temperature sensation at the level and that that's we have to know that it is on both side not contralateral or if it's lateral to the lesion but on both side because both sides are affected right so that is it loss of pain and temperature sensation at the level and below the lesion So that is it. So due to interruption of the what? And lateral uh, and then anterior spinothalamic tract. But what we really have to know that it is we have or there is intact there is intact sensation of vibration. Sensation of vibration. Due to intact dorsal column uh, dorsal column medial laminiscus. Because we have to really know that the dorsal column the middle level discuss this insufficiency is not affecting it right so that is it there is intact sensation of vibration and proper reception proprio so that's it 
then we have an, a kind of autonomic dysfunction autonomic dysfunction because in some level for example the Tura Kulumba outflow right even in the Tura Kulumba outflow actually uh, the, uh, we have sympathetic nervous system right in the Tura Kulumba region we have Tura Kulumba outflow which are the uh, auto, uh, autonomic nerves specifically sympathetic nervous system right so if we have the ischemia affecting the Tura Kulumba region so definitely uh, there will going to be a kind of symptoms that are associated with what with sympathetic nervous system uh, uh, damage so these symptoms will manifest as this uh, autos autostatic hypotension autostatic hypotension then for example even uh, bladder dysfunction or whatsoever because all the way down even the parasympathetic nervous system are going to be affected right because this lesion has to be all the way down to the spinal cord below the lesion all the area that are below the lesion so even the parasympathetic outflow that are uh, controlling the bladder and then bowel movement are going to be affected right so that is it then bladder dysfunction so etc and other related even bowel movement dysfunction and other related autonomic nervous system dysfunction so treatment depend on the cause depend on the etiology or treat the underlying cause so thank you very much